What is going on, everybody? Welcome to Episode 7, Rebuilding the Denver Broncos. We have our first offseason ahead of us after a surprising first season. Now, we did go 8-8, eight and eight. so while we made the AFC Championship, we still got to continue to get better. We can't expect to make the playoffs at 8-8, eight and eight. so a big offseason ahead of us because this is a team that... You know, yeah, we were in the AFC Championship, but we're looking to make that ne next step forward. We want to win 10, 11 games. We want to win a Super Bowl. So we're going to need to probably improve this offensive line. We could maybe use another wide receiver. Emmanuel Sanders is going to regress and I believe become a free agent. On the defense, you know, we've, we've got some Band-Aids here with Navarro Bowman, Eric Berry, but we could use some upgrades at safety and at linebacker, but really going to be focused mostly on the offense, I think. So really excited for this offseason. We're going to kind of skip ahead here. Another storyline that's a little bit in the works as we were talking about our needs there is Philip Lindsay. was kind of a star rookie, but then was just okay for us. He had like seven or 800 yards and then fumbled away our Super Bowl hopes in the AFC Championship game. So that's going to be a bit of a storyline to watch here is what running backs become available to us in the offseason? Do we look to upgrade from him? Do we give him a third year of redemption? He is in the last year of his contract. So that's going to be an interesting story ahead. So I'm going to kind of scroll through the Pro Bowl roster here. Some of you guys care about this more than others. So I'll just make sure it's here for you guys. See if there's any surprises. I do not see any big surprises. Well, Deion Jordan makes it. That's a surprise. And maybe in the future, we should actually wait till uh, this screen arrives before we do those end of season player reviews so that we can see when guys like uh, Michael Kendricks at 74 overall or Kennard make the Pro Bowl. So there you have it, your 2019, 2020 Pro Bowl. Technically, it's 2020. So in the Super Bowl, it's going to be the Steelers and the Eagles, a battle for Pennsylvania. That, that would be a hell of a Super Bowl. So let's skip ahead. I'll, I'll take the... The Eagles, Carson Wentz and the Eagles to win this sucker. And 24-21 Steelers, actually. So congratulations to the Steelers on another Super Bowl championship. Just competing with the Patriots, trying to be the all-time leader there. So I am going to fix the regression here on Eric Berry and Navarro Bowman because we did do our player review upgrades on them. So it doesn't make sense that they would regress. So I'm going to fix those real quick. So we definitely want to bring Eric Berry and Navarro Bowman back. Those are two positions of scarcity on our team. And it's not that, you know, they need massive contracts to be a huge piece of the future, but certainly players that we don't want going anywhere as they can kind of remain as band-aids for us. So Eric Berry's going to take the deal. And then Navarro Bowman wants a two-year contract. That's a nice little contract, career revival for him with Vic Fangio. I love that storyline. So he's coming back. That's good to see. So the rest of these guys, Muhammad Wilkerson, we picked him up before the year. We'll let him go. Not going to pay our punter. Shelby Harris, I'd like to try and get back. He's just a good depth piece to have. He's a good run defender. So let's make him a deal. Uh, he wants to test free agency. That's okay. We'll let uh, Pecco, the rest of these guys, go. So we're definitely going to need one more defensive lineman, I think, to sign or, or draft. So let's go ahead and skip ahead to the first week of free agency here. Get, get those checkbooks ready. Now, I will warn you guys before I open this up, see what free agents are available. Because of the way we do this, where we kind of forwarded the contract lengths of a lot of the, well, really all of the veteran players... For whatever reason that EA you can come up with, you know, just add it to the list of Madden 19 garbage. Um, when I did that, it did not allow the teams to negotiate with those players. Now, I know what you're thinking. That's a little unrealistic. Well, when you see this, you'll actually see that the free agent market in this rebuild, I think, is going to much more accurately reflect what we will see in real life then as opposed to our other rebuilds where there's literally no good players in free agency look at the last two or three years like there's going to be star players available in the free agent market so there are going to be some free agents now there might be some that you would argue oh the team would never let them go but another thing i will point out is that a lot of these guys are actually on teams that 
will be pressed against the cap. And I think that these are actually a lot of players that will be available next year. So let's open this up. We got $61 million in cap space. And you can see right away, Bobby Wagner, Michael Thomas, Chris Jones, Tom Brady, Melvin Gordon. So a lot of good players available. Now, really all these guys I think are pretty realistic. They're all on good teams that are gonna be cap strapped next year. Some of them are aging veterans that may not want the team might not want to resign them the one guy obviously is tom brady um now let me try and justify that you do have the patriots here making an offer for him but bill belichick is in control of his team and if tom brady's regressing which he is in this situation he's down to a 91 if he didn't play up to the standards at quarterback that he was expecting and to be completely fair, Tom Brady did not play that great in 2018 to 2019. He was still good, but if he continued to regress at 42, 43 years old, Bill Belichick could very well say, you know what, Tom, we're going to figure something else out. You know, I, don't, I don't think many people expected that Peyton Manning or Brett Favre would end up going, ending their careers on other teams, but you know, I, I don't think it's completely impractical to say that this could happen. I, I would not predict that it would. But anyway, let's get our own checkbooks out and kind of scroll through position by position and find out what would be, you know, logical signings for us. Quarterback, we're good. And then at running back, there's some guys available here. Melvin Gordon would be a total beast for us. Actually not getting any offers right now. Now, he wants a lot of money, but to steal him from the Chargers would be very nice. Derrick Henry would be a great compliment to Philip Lindsay. We're going to come back to this situation. Um... You know, we talked about Philip Lindsay and what running backs might arise, and if we think about going over it, that's an obvious upgrade. So Michael Thomas becomes a free agent here. That actually wouldn't blow my mind. With Drew Brees, that Saints era kind of ending, they don't have a ton of cap space. So if they didn't think that the quarterback they had was going to elevate the play of Michael Thomas, I could see him hitting the market. A.J. Green, absolutely, at 31 years of age. Now the Dolphins with EA Sports here are going to, just absolutely splash on AJ Green like they always do so I normally would consider him um, Emmanuel Sanders does become available for us we're going to come back to this wide receiver conversation tight end we don't really need to make any signings here we got a good tight end group offensive line we definitely need some help our tackles are good but the guards and the centers we could still use another guard opposite of Dalton Reisner and we definitely need a center so let's see Corey Lindsley 28 years old he would be a fantastic signing i think here increase that pass protection right away so i'm gonna make a five-year deal to him that bonus not too much we can cut him if he regresses too bad uh, we're front runners for him so i like that signing a lot right there at guard good to see the redskins at least you know they always make these splashes it's like them and the dolphins it's some glitch or something in this game but it makes sense that they would they would just absolutely get the check out to get Brandon Sheriff back so that's fine with me uh, so then at left guard Joe Thune also available I, I'm gonna make an offer to him if someone swoops in and takes Lindsley from us we, we'll be happy to have him but if we can get them both that will really make this offensive line much more competent for next year uh, so we are gonna be front runners there on that contract I'd be really excited to bring those two in because then our offensive lines really pretty full and then on the defensive line, Derek Wolf is going to become a free agent. I'm perfectly fine with that because we do have Draymond Jones, who we're going to try and develop a little more next year. We definitely want to get him more playing time. But we should bring in another body here because Shelby Harris is looking like he's going to sign with the Packers. So let's see if we could get like uh, maybe Dean Lowry just swap with the Packers or Willie Henry if not both of those guys would be great fits and then seeing Vic Beasley there also kind of inspires me to make to try and sign a um an edge rush uh, a third edge rush because when Chubb and, and Miller if one of them get hurt we don't have a whole lot so I might end up making an offer for all three of these guys actually Dean Lowry wants a five-year deal I'm not going to offer him that much I'm actually going to lower this to I, I, I'm not going to pay him that much because he might not be a full-time starter for us but he does fit our 3-4 scheme. And then Willie Henry, the same can be said about him. I'll make a similar offer to him. And Vic Beasley as well. We're going to go down to a two-year deal for about $4 million a year. So I would love to get some depth there from those guys. We'll see what they think of those. 
maybe like a Shelton or a Brockers to be that run defending replacement for Harris. Chris Jones would be a pretty crazy upgrade for this defense, but I don't think that's really necessary to spend that much money on another defensive star, at least uh, in terms of the pass rush. But, you know, we've been talking about the hole at linebacker here for us, and Deion Jones would be a great fit here right next to Navarro Bowman. Bobby Wagner is also available, but he's 29. Deion Jones, this contract's going to take him up to when he is 29. So we're going to go ahead and make a big offer for Deion Jones. Market value here is about $11 million for a linebacker. So we're going to really splash here for Deion Jones. He would be an exciting upgrade for this defense. He's basically what Vic Fangio wanted when they drafted Roquan Smith. So hopefully he, he likes that offer because it would really be a shame to miss out on any of these four. Uh, Bobby Wagner is between the Colts or, or the Chiefs and the Seahawks. That would be a shame to see him go interdivision. And then at corner, Chris Harris becomes available. And I think that's actually pretty realistic because he's had some kind of contract struggles with this team in real life. And also, like we've said, Bryce Callahan, Kareem Jackson, they're kind of more nickel guys. So if we could get a Byron Jones or a Marcus Peters here to be more of that outside corner, I think that'd be huge. So let's go with Marcus Peters. He can reunite with Eric Berry here. I really like that. He'd be a great fit for us. He's actually a scheme fit. So we're going to go about uh, almost 10 mil a year for Marcus Peters after a pretty disappointing year, a couple years there really for the Rams. Uh, so he does like that. And then at free safety, Will Parks is leaving us and Justin Simmons. I'm okay with that. And I'm not really going to make a splash here for Kevin Byer to compete with the Dolphins. We're going to have to address that probably in the draft. Uh, so how about it running back? We still have 20 mil in cap space. I, I'm not going to pay that much for Melvin Gordon. I, I could see getting involved in the Derrick Henry sweepstakes, but he wants a five-year deal. I'm not sure I want to pay him that. Kareem Hunt is available, not getting any offers. Not sure I want that trouble in the locker room. No one else I'm really looking at there. So how about the wide receivers? I'm not going to blow out for Michael Thomas, I don't think. AJ Green getting those bids from Miami. I, I think bringing Emmanuel Sanders back in a one-year deal though is pretty reasonable uh, just to kind of be a placeholder there until we can you know be sure we have a future there with Sutton, Hamilton, maybe we draft a guy but we definitely need some more talent in that room so we'll bring Sanders back for one more year. He can still play and then maybe later in free agency, we look at some more depth because that is definitely a problem for us at wide receiver. So fingers crossed, we're going to skip ahead to stage two. Hopefully we get the big signings here. Oh boy. All right. So we upgrade the offensive line with Joe Thune and Corey Lindsley. We get Emmanuel Sanders back and we bring in Deion Jones and Marcus Peters to replace Chris Harris and we get Willie Henry as depth on the D-line. That is a very good week of free agency, I would say. We do have an upgrade for somebody. Looks like uh, Joe Thune and Marcus Peters. So we'll go ahead with the agile for Joe Thune. That's kind of the Shanahan scheme. Someone that can move a little bit. Big upgrade. He's a mobile dude, too. That's a that's a big signing for us to get a big upgraded guard. After we let Paradise go last year to, to bring in a guy like him and Lindsley, this offensive line is going to look pretty nice. I'm actually going to upgrade. Eh, we'll just – he's a man-to-man -man cover guy. But uh, we, we run a lot of man and zone, so I'm going to just kind of try to balance him out. We're going to go zone. <laughs> well, that'll do it. Three zone coverage. It was probably his biggest weakness. So I think we're probably good to skip ahead to stage three of free agency. Maybe we can find some value contracts. Dean Lowry's going elsewhere. That's fine because we got Willie Henry. We do still have $18 million in cap space. Kareem Hunt getting offers from the Patriots. That's very Patriot-esque. Uh, let's see, any running backs here that we would think about? Probably not. Uh, wide receiver. Let's see. Philip Dorsett's a scheme fit. We could use some depth there. So let's. I'm just going to make him a one year deal for way less than he's asking for. He might not take it, but uh, why not? 
he does not appear to like that cheap deal. Um, Michael Pruitt's actually an interesting player. He's not getting any offers. If anything were to happen to Noah Fant, he's a pretty similar type of kind of flexible tight end. Someone you'd flex out wide a little more. So I'm actually going to make a, a three-year deal to Michael Pruitt. Actually, just a two-year deal. Hopefully he likes that. Eh, not really. Oh, Jeff Howerman he also hits the market. We definitely want him back. I'm actually okay paying him a little bit because he's a really good blocker. So he should like that. Should be good on the offensive line. We can withdraw our offer on Vic Beasley because the Raiders want him. No offers here for Tyler Lancaster. Kind of a good run defending guy that could be solid depth here. Let's give him a three-year deal. Lower that bonus if we ever need to get rid of him. Hopefully he likes this. He might take that. Adam Gotsis, again, did not realize we were losing him. So we'll make an offer to him, bring him back, lower that bonus. Hopefully we're able to get one of those two, if not both. Maybe Bud Dupree on a one-year deal to be that guy we were looking for with Vic Beasley. He seems a little more willing to take a one-year deal. <laughs> Keep Dalib tempting to bring him in and convert him to free safety because he could certainly play it. He had some good times here in Denver. He only wants a one-year deal. Why not? So I think that's going to do it for my free agent offers. We're going to skip ahead. So we get a good chunk of those. We get Jeff Howerman, Akib Tlaib, who we're going to go ahead and convert to free safety right away. He actually meets our position change requirements too for what we look for in the TFGO league. So you got to be a certain age. You got to have 87 speed or agility and you got to uh, get nerfed to 80 zone. So if you move a guy to safety, he goes down to 80. Well, he actually only has 79 zone coverage. So I, I think he's definitely a player that could convert to safety at the end of his career just like that. And that buys us some time. Uh, to draft a safety or you know we might not start a keep to leave there we could end up just cutting him it was just a one-year deal also good to get Howerman and Gotsis back a little depth there with Lancaster so let's go ahead and advance to the draft I, I don't think I'm going to be doing any trading up we have enough holes with safety and receiver running back luckily we were able to get these two linemen though but I, I really don't see myself trading up so let's kick this thing off. We're going to look at like the top 15 picks or so. So the Dolphins question is, do they stick with Josh Rosen or do they go with a different direction? Let's see. They go with a defensive tackle for the second year in a row in the first round. You know, Derek Brown's a hell of a player. If he went first overall, it would not really surprise me. So they're going to stand by their new quarterback, Josh Rosen. The Seahawks and Vikings had a falling off here. So the Seahawks get a tackle. The Vikings also get a tackle. Definitely both could go there. And then the Raiders picking top five again. Jalen Phillips to compliment Clayland Furl there. Good pick. The Bills get a stud wide receiver in Jerry Judy. CD Lamb to the Chiefs. Wow, that'd be nice for him and Patrick Mahomes after a disappointing season without Tyreek Hill there. So when do we see Jake Fromm come off the board? A guard to the Ravens? A yonder replacement, perhaps, from one Harbaugh to the next, from Michigan to Baltimore. We've seen that before. Chase Young, pass rusher to the Bucks. So the quarterbacks, not really surprising, or, you know, not breaking out enough. Uh, Anthony Jennings to the Panthers. Uh, there we go. The Jacksonville Jaguars getting Jake Fromm. Wow, that'd be a steal. And then the Texans grabbing a D tackle. I'm curious when Tua is going to go here. Still no Tua. There's Justin Herbert to the Chargers, so they're picking him over Tua. Uh, Falcons Falcons replacing uh, Jones, who we stole from them. LaVisca Chenault, the good receiver to the Titans. Corner to the Cardinals. Really curious where Tua's going. Still no Tua. Still no Tua. Wow. I mean, I if this happened to Tua, it really would not surprise me. I mean... I, there's a lot of holes in his game, but could it be the Patriots here? That would be something. Nope, they go with a linebacker. So we're up. So our best options are going to be Jonathan Taylor at running back to get a you know more complete back to complement this good offensive line we have here. That might be the pick. 
We could go Henry Ruggs, get that deep threat at wide receiver. Certainly tempting. Um, honestly, probably going to be between those two. The question is, would we be able to trade up for one of those guys if we passed? Also, some safeties available. I don't know if these guys are going to be you know, worth a first round pick. They're kind of a cluster of guys there. I, you know, after we sign those offensive linemen, I really like the idea of Jonathan Taylor and really establish an identity with this offense because he brings a physical element that Philip Lindsay doesn't bring, but we can still use Philip Lindsay as a receiving back at times. I'm usually not pro running back in the first round, but he is a star potential player. So are these other guys but they're more that speed element that we already have with Lindsey. Taylor gives us that bruiser. And I'm not a big Freeman guy. So we're going to go ahead with Taylor and I might trade up for the wide receiver still, but uh you know, you can't really complain there. That is a, a bruising balanced running back there to go to work for us behind a much improved offensive line. So I'm going to skip ahead to like the 6th or 7th pick in the second round and if Rugs is still there, I might pull the trigger there. So here we are, sixth pick with the Bills. I think we have an extra third round pick. Now, it can be tricky sometimes, but uh, let's see if they do this. The trade logic isn't always, uh, doesn't always add up. Wow, the Bills added Leonard Williams and Hunter Henry. Remind me to move Leonard Williams to defensive tackle for them because they run a 4-3 scheme. Uh, but him and Ed Oliver together, oof, look out for that. And they were already kind of a nasty defense when we played them last year. So let's see if they take this. I would expect them to. God, they're not even close. It's so lame. That's such a good offer, too. What if we include a future third? Yeah, I can't go more than that. Can we please improve this trade logic, Madden? This is ridiculous. Let's skip ahead a few picks. He's still there. I don't think the Bucks would take him. The Panthers need a wide receiver. Let's see what they think. Mm, they might be a little closer. Rugs would bring that deep element that we're really missing. So I'm going to throw that third round pick in here again. And if they don't take it, we'll go another 10 picks. Oh, they're closer. So maybe we got to go about 10 more picks. The Jags, they don't take them. The Texans, they don't take them. The Giants, I don't think will. The Seahawks might. Nope. The Chargers wouldn't. The Falcons wouldn't. Titans just went with wide receivers, so I don't think they would. Cardinals might. Let's uh let's try and get involved here. I mean, oh wow. Why? Madden. Why? Why are you the worst freaking thing ever? So ridiculous. What is wrong with this game? <laughs> like, why would that ever happen in any world? You can't tell me this is simulation football. It's absolute crap. I got distracted and offered the wrong wrong way around here. Let's let's see. And and they would they're they're not going to accept this. But to pick up a third round pick to move down 11 spots in the second round, they would take this all day. They're close. If they don't take this, I might just force it. All right. That's a lot to give up, but we really need some speed on the outside at wide receiver because we, we got some talent, but we don't have speed like this. So Henry Ruggs, 70 overall, quick development, 95 speed, good balanced wide receiver. That agility, agility a little low, but he's a guy that's, that's going to take the top off the defense for us. We got the offensive line to buy some more time, and we got the quarterback to get it there, so I am – very comfortable making that move to get that talented of a player. Uh, even though it's more than we would have realistically had to give up. But uh, let's skip ahead. We still have a third round pick because we picked one up from the Steelers. So Tua finally went. I'm sure we'll find out sooner rather than later where he ended up. So we could maybe use an edge presence at outside linebacker. Could go with uh, Carter Coughlin. Good player out of Minnesota. Maybe a... Do we think about a corner? I don't know if any of these guys are what we're truly looking for. Another thing we do definitely need is a free safety. I think I'm going to go with Justin Tranquil here out of Western Michigan. 
Uh, he's got a good 40 time, good zone coverage with a C there. It's going to be tied for the best. You know, all these guys are pretty close, and we might end up picking one of these guys with our next pick too because we, we do need safety depth pretty bad. Uh, 69 overall, normal development. Not as good as I thought he'd be, to be honest, but um, he'll, he'll you know, sit there and learn. Maybe our next pick will be better. Skip to next pick. So Ben DeLuca is still there. I think that's got to be the pick there. This guy's get, giving us a first-round grade back here. 21 years old, fast, but I think Ben DeLuca is going to be a better option for us. That's more like it. 71, quick, little less athletic. He, he might be more of a strong safety type, preferably. You know, who knows? That could be our safety duo in the future. We do have another pick right here. So I'm a little torn here because there's not a clear pick. I think we're just going to go with a center because there's some guys here that appeal to me. Even though we just signed Corey Lindsley to get some depth here, I actually like the way that this Michael Menick guy looks. I'm take a chance. He does have quick dev, but he's 66 overall, which actually that's not the worst because he can kind of learn and grow as Lindsley starts. So I'm okay with that pick in the fifth round skip ahead here so we could probably take a corner this Malcolm Roach guy keeps popping up but he's not a big scheme fit for us I'm gonna look at a corner maybe a speedier guy or we go with a guy that could maybe be a safety Geno Stone he, he looks like that kind of Iowa prototype right that bigger corner seems like a good pick actually uh, 69 overall but he might make a better safety because he's he's only got 87 speed. So I think we're going to convert him, and who knows? He could end up starting for us. Pull a Micah Hyde. Skip ahead. Maybe another corner because we decided that we're going to convert that last pick to safety. So how about we go with... Trying to find someone maybe a little more versatile, but with some size. It's a tough ask in the sixth round, but I think I'm gonna go, uh, I'm gonna go with this Jamison Houston out of Baylor. Eh, maybe not a whole lot there. Skip to the next pick. I might actually go with a punter here because we don't have one and you can get a cheap four-year deal. So we'll go with Joseph Charlton. All right. Not sure if we'll roll with him or not, but he's almost Mr. Irrelevant, so it doesn't really matter. So that, my friends, was a hell of an offseason. I think this team is poised to really try to repeat that and this defense is going to be really fun this year and then offensively i'm excited with this offensive line here to see what drew lock and then jonathan taylor and philip Lindsay is still going to be relevant for you Lindsay truthers out there uh, but then also with henry ruggs and that deep deep speed like this offense could be a lot of fun so i'm excited to see what turns out but that is going to do it for this episode guys please do hit that like button and cheers as always We'll see you next time. Peace out.